Sup Movie Club, Edward Scissorhands. It was my first time watching it. This movie was pretty damn amazing. I'm still tearing up over it. After watching this, I have not only a new appreciation for just having hands in general, but also the Hank Green song, Edward Spoon Hands. I mean, the difficulty of just having scissors hands is obviously, you know, only marginally better than not having hands. At least Edward Spoon Hands can, you know, eat cereal, albeit slowly. Edward Scissor Hands can't even fat. That's just that's just cruel. I love the how well Tim Burton crafted this town that is just the thing I hate about, you know, especially like urban sprawl like the United States. It puts my own hometown to shame, and I even that's saying something. I like the abrupt contrast between the creepy hill with the mansion on top versus just this urban sprawl neighborhood with the cookie cutter houses that only have they're only different because of the color, like just completely flat, boring place. There's like, yeah, I think it was in Florida, uh, they filmed it, um, and the gossipy housewives. Oh my fucking god, drive me nuts. The setting is a nice commentary on American society, which, like I said, I despise. It kind of reminded me also a little bit of the the town from Cat in the Hat. I mean, I, and especially with all of the like weird outfits and stuff like that, it seems like the only thing you'd see in like a Dr. Seuss adapted film or a Tim Burton film. It's kind of refreshing to see how 90s and late 80s everything was, especially all the hair. The first half of this movie was surprisingly funny. Like when Edward runs into the waterbed for the first time and then when, uh, then when Kim comes in, they both freak the fuck out and he turns the bed into like a bunch of geysers. Do they still make waterbeds? I kind of want one. I fell in love with the character of Edward. He's so, he's like ridiculously kind and he has knives for hands and he could be, you know, like this menace, but he's probably the nicest guy ever, at least in this town, God. I mean, he only uses these awesome appendages to like clip hedges and cut hair like nobody's business. And, you know, he's the nicest guy, but also is the most talented person with the blade. It was also cool how he kept making dinosaurs out of all the bushes. Like, there was a pterodactyl and a sea serpent at the mansion in the beginning, and he makes, like, a T-Rex for the first time at, at the uh, Boggs' house. I don't know where he learned about dinosaurs, though. The big thing I noticed that despite having, you know, like I said, despite him having these sharp blades for handies, the, the town is way more dangerous than he is. I haven't watched a tragedy like this in a long time. It's, it's movies like this that kind of make me hate people in general. I mean, not everyone, just people who are, you know, greedy and hateful and all that. You know, when they saw the angry mob who had sort of adored him because they gave him nice, they gave them houses, nice hedges before and cut their hair and all that. Especially people like Jim. Oh, he's, I fucking hate dicks like him. Oh my god. Joyce is also extremely annoying. She tries to seduce him and then, like, blames him for it. Like, and pretends he came at her with the blades. But this is Hands down, my favorite Tim Burton movie. I'd only seen a few before, like, I liked his Charlie and the Chocolate Factory adaptation. Sweetie Todd was okay. Uh, I guess the music didn't do it for me. Obviously, The Night Before Christmas is a great movie, but it's not, I don't love it. Johnny Depp did an absolutely fantastic job in the lead role, especially considering how difficult it must have been to wear that costume. Like, even, even besides the scissors, he's wearing this skin-tight leather outfit, the, like, the whole movie. You wonder why he never needed a shower. The ending was just, it just drained all of the energy out of me. I had to like take a break before I could come back and film my review. Because, you know, he saves Kevin's life from the freaking Jim drunk and his friend drunk driving. And then he gets shunned out of town. And then, you know, Jim just decides to beat the shit out of him. I was a little surprised when Edward killed him, you know, because he's such a nice guy who had barely only been pushed over the edge like once before. And he didn't even really do anything that bad, considering what he could have done. I can't say that in that situation I wouldn't have done the same thing given that he's beating the crap out of me and kicks the girl I love. He's just such a fucking dick. I don't know. But yeah, in a violent rage like that, I don't, I don't, I can't really say I wouldn't have also done that. I don't want to blame him too much for that. It wasn't in cold blood anyway. Overall, fantastic film. Quite an improvement from fucking Human Centipede 2 last week. I'm glad I skipped that one. This is my first movie club review and I was excited to get back into it because I finally just, you know, had the motivation to actually sit down and make make the review responses. And the first week is Human Centipede 2. Oh, awesome. I'll skip this one. But yeah, glad, great improvement to have Edward Scissor's hands. I'm really glad I watched this. Definitely recommend this movie to anyone, especially hopeless romantics like myself. That's my review. All right, movie club. I'll see you next week.